Four let the storm rage on. Only two copies of the one drop Robin Hood, but four copies of the Floodborne. Four strength for raging fire. Four sudden chill. Three tink. Four Ursa Deceiver. Three Ursa Deceiver of all. And two we don't talk about Bruno. Just for the sake of anyone that was wondering about some specific counts there. Very nice indeed. Always nice to go through that stuff when we have a moment. So it looks like Din is keeping two cards from the mulligan and getting rid of five. And it looks like Luca is keeping two and pitching five as well. So what we're essentially seeing here is players going, I want these two cards, the rest, I'm going to, you know, try and get something better. Now, I did see that the Hidden Cove was one of the cards Luca kept. I'm afraid that's the only one of the four cards between the two players I was able to catch. Yeah, that Hidden Cove can be important though obviously if we get that um, early curve of uh, Diablo into Bucky Diablo then that hidden cove is important because Luca knows that Din is playing the full four count of Brawl which could immediately shut that down he's, he's actually missed it quite a lot so far when, when he would have liked it these first couple of games but maybe third time is the charm but we're going to be moving into game three our first top 64 match of the Disney Lorcana challenge day two there's a fist bump and here we go so it does look like Din, of course, going first in game three. We are getting an ink straight away. It is again that Maleficent Dragon, which seems to be mostly ink in this matchup. <laughs> but we, or at least until the late game. Yeah. But we see the turn one Porpsicle, your preferred turn one play. And we get a Beast Ink and a turn one Diablo, which is Luca's preferred turn one play. Yeah, but of course, having a little spy of the hand. There's a Brawl, a How Far I'll Go, a Fishbone Quill, a Flavisham, a Maleficent Monstrous Dragon. And I think that was to develop your brain there as well towards the back. Passing over, Dean immediately draws a card. He's going to put that develop the brain to the top. He obviously wants to start digging. And yeah, look, top two cards. One goes in your hand, one goes to the bottom of your deck. Important to note, cards at the bottom of your deck probably going to stay there. Yes. So you do need to be a little bit careful as to what goes on the bottom because they're going to be very hard to get back. Yeah, for sure. A second Maleficent Monstrous Dragon Ooh. and pass back over to Luca. That seems to be two Maleficent Dragon in every game just getting inked. And it's worth mentioning there are only three copies of the Maleficent Monstrous Dragon in the deck, which I, I think is a fine count. Three or four is. Is, is quite common. Uh, players go one way or the other. But yeah, just worth bearing in mind that Luca has that information as well. So he's going to be counting these Maleficents that make their way into the ink well to have an idea of what he needs to, how many he needs to worry about later. And we do see that Diablo. We did not see the Bucky. So a small sigh of relief from Din, I imagine. But the Diablo, again, just a fantastic card. Whenever Din draws uh, during his turn, Luca will also draw. And it's at the Cove, so no Brawl, Ross. No, hiding out in the Cove, turning off Brawl, which is lovely brawl lets you banish a character with three strength or two strength or less whereas Diablo has two until he's chilling in the code when he goes up to three and turns off brawl but of course having seen the hand with Diablo into on turn one that told Luca that if you want to keep Diablo on the board you've got to go and hide in the cove yeah absolutely did put down the fishbone quill gonna immediately exert it um, to put a hidden uh, another ink into the inkwell uh, no, I believe we inked the fishbone quill and played one. Ah, that's ahead. right. So my apologies. Slight confusion there. <laughs> I'm used to seeing the fishbone quill on the board. Yeah, one jump ahead instead of uh, increasing our ramp. And just for the benefit of newer players, if you ever hear us referring to ramp, we're just talking about adding extra cards to your ink well. Of course, you can ink once per turn in the game of Lorcana, but there are cards of like one jump ahead, how far I'll go, fishbone quill, detective Mickey, all these cards that do additional, uh, put additional cards into the ink well. And we just, we tend to call it ramping. Yeah, ramping works very nicely indeed. I sometimes use ramping for strength, which just gets confusing because really ramping is ink. But I think you can ramp your strength as well. Absolutely. You can even ramp willpower if you're feeling a little bit spicy. Oh, daring today, aren't we? Yeah, we are. But Din's not got much going on here. Building up the ink well quite yeah. nicely, but nothing on the board at all. Luca, at this stage, it is all about finding that bucky. You've got Diablo, you've got your draw engine established. You don't need something like a ladder yet. I mean, I suppose you could take out that lone porpsicle if you were feeling really mean. But honestly here, it's Bucky. Get that full combo going. You didn't get the top 64 without using a lot of Bucky. You need to try and dig. But of course, if you're just not drawing it, you're just not drawing it. No, oh, absolutely. I do see that Ursa Deceiver of All in hand, which may be an interest because we're holding also Let the Storm Rage On, which could allow a double, so a double sing of that for four damage and draw two. But we're eyeing up the... Oh, we were eyeing at the Beast Tragic Hero, but we're going to ink the strength of a Raging Fire, and down comes that Ursa 
to the Seer of All. That Enchanted is stunning. Diablo is going to quest for one, which of course will enable it to draw, uh, enable Luca to draw, should I say, whenever Din does, which he does. Yeah, Din draws to start his turn, so Luca draws to start Din's turn. But it means if a hero and Flavisham comes down, I think he would need still one more ink in addition to ink for the turn. But if a hero and Flavisham comes down, gets rid of that popsicle, Luca draws two cards as well. We got the one of Judy Hops in hand, just saying, you know. Could, could play Judy Hops right now. But instead, it looks like we are playing. I think we brought the Ursula to see of all. Yeah, I don't we did indeed it. brawl the Ursula. Oh, and we're inking Judy Hops. That means guaranteed no Judy in this matchup at all in top 64. But, you know, she's still a rookie. She's not been there long. You know, give her a chance to get her feet. And then... It's all right. This, is, this isn't what she's for. She'll, 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 she'll be for other matchups if, if Din is able to progress. Yeah, of course. But, uh, yeah, this hidden... Sorry to cut you off, Ross, but okay. just, I want to emphasize this hidden, the amount of work this hidden cove is putting in. Such a simple, cheap location. Just one cost inkable, giving one strength and one willpower. But that makes all the difference, especially in a meta game, which is very much um, ruled by how much strength you have because of these cards like Brawl, like Madame Medusa, or uh, more recently, Under the Sea. Absolutely, and we did see it was one of the two cards kept by Luca in that mulligan phase, and Luca has got that Aladdin down now. We've seen it's been a big threat to Din's items throughout this matchup yep, so yep, far. Yep. Having it down here is nice, and it looks like Din is going to play the Gramatala. Yep, nice little uh, bit of card draw there. We're, still, we're yet to see a lucky dime hit the board over the course of these games, which uh, is quite peculiar. It's normally a pretty sure thing that you're going to see that dime in a sapphire match but hasn't come up yet but there's still time we have 20 minutes exactly left on the clock and we are getting to that point where as you were mentioning earlier ross where lucas must be thinking okay yeah, definitely the right decision in game one to just call it and move on yeah, we would be getting to the stage. Now, I reckon in kind of about five minutes' time, that's probably when we would have run out had we played that game one out to its full conclusion. But potentially, absolutely. That's why I keep saying, playing the clock, unfortunately, in top 64, top 32, and top 16, it is a genuinely relevant skill we don't have all day until we get to top eight when we apparently do have all day, although some of us have dinner plans. <laughs> we are inking a second Aladdin here. So there's more ink in the ink well. We got one Aladdin down. That's enough for now. But what are we eyeing up in the hand? I cannot see what that first card is. Uh, oh, it's a beast. It is a beast. Beast Tragic Hero coming down. And Aladdin's chilling in the cove, which now means that Aladdin is actually out of Madame Medusa range. Yeah, and, and the 4-4 means that it could um, go into the Grand Martala and survive it as well. So, yeah, really nice. Aladdin definitely benefiting from the Hidden Cove. And as I said, that Beast Tragic Hero hitting the board. So if it is still on the board at the beginning of Luca's next turn, and if it has all its willpower, then he'll draw an additional card. And Luca really is, like, drawing a lot this game. This Diablo has put in an awful lot of work. He's denied Din the uh, ability to play Brawl on it. So this Hidden Cove really putting in so much work. Uh, so, not still not much of a board. Here's the thing, there's two games in a row where Din has just not developed much of a board at all. Lots of ink in the ink well, being able to keep cards in hand, avoiding that Bucky, although I think that's more Luca just not drawing into it. Yep. Game one, Dim was doing a good job getting rid of the Bucky, but games two and three, Bucky's just not making an appearance. He's hiding in a tree somewhere, and it's not going great in that regard, but Din is not able to get much of a board going. And this is kind of playing into Luca's hand. Luca's on five law, and we saw in the last game, get characters down, quest a little more aggressive and just try and build up that lead because there comes a point in the game where Din's deck goes, oh, yeah, no, your chance to win was, was like a couple of turns ago. We're over now, mate. Yeah, this Grand Martala is going to be singing How Far I'll Go. Look at the top two cards. One's going to go into the hand, one is the ink. Well, I believe one was a Be Prepared. I believe that's what I just saw, which I imagine will go into the hand if, if I was right in seeing that. We're going to ink the Queen of Hearts. And, and down here comes we go. Seven cost action song, wiping the board. And yeah, this Diablo has definitely outstayed its welcome, especially with a beast on the board as well, which would have given Luca even more card draw. And the thing is, this Diablo just kind of shuts down the way Din wants to play the game 
because really you want the fishbone quill on the board, you want a Porpsicle, you want to Flavisham, and you just want to be able to keep playing these Porpsicles, keep um, questing with Flavisham to draw more cards, keep inking with the fishbone quill, but the combination of the Diablo and the uh, Aladdin removing these items has just kind of slowed in all the way down. Yeah, we now see double Porpsicle. There is a beast on Lucas' side of the board, chilling in that cove, <sighs> going up to a 4-6, which is a very good stat line for a five cost. Very much so. Not going to be falling to Medusa anymore. Of course, there are Maleficent Monstrous Dragons in the deck. We're not. Oh, Be Prepared comes down just to get rid of Beast. That seems slightly over the top. Um, oh, and another one just immediately followed up and put into the cove. Heartbreaking. I understand what you're saying, Ross. Like, it, it doesn't feel like the hugest of value, but uh, I don't think I'd have made it. I think I'd have made the same move because just because Lucas got four cards in hand, which is a lot. It's kind of a lot. But if this Beast Tragic Hero just sits there, then it's going to get carried away. So may not feel like the highest value be prepared, but I understand the decision. But another one just coming straight down and moving into the cove. We've got double Flavisham getting rid of double Popsicle, pouring double two Ooh. cards. See, the exact, that's what I mean. Like, could you imagine if the Diablo was exerted on the board at that point? Yeah, like, that would be bad. Uh, See, uh, I'm not saying don't double be prepared, but I, and look, I am not in top 64 of this challenge. Let's be clear. I like waiting a turn or two. If they've got one character down, I want to sit there being like, oh, no, I have nothing in hand. <laughs> but of course, if yep. you do that, your opponent plays an Ursula, picks it out your hand, yep. and you never get a chance to use it. So do you want to use it suboptimally, or do you want to lose a chance to use it at all? Yep, I think all that, of these things are at play. Yeah, I, no, no, you're, I was just going to say, I think you're right. There's definitely arguments both ways, and this time, Din choosing to just say, nope, let's get rid of it. Be gone. Oh. I'll be prepared. Maleficent Dragon for two more inks certainly would have been a, something I think would have been a bit more fun, leaving a big body on the board while also getting rid of it. Of course, two are in the ink well this game, so only one is available maximum. But I think there is nine ink there, so if there's any way you could draw it, just saying, Din, I'm just, the dragon seems like a good call right now. I would play the dragon if I could. That double sudden chill, getting rid of Lucky Dime and one jump ahead, I believe. That one, that Lucky Dime being... Yeah, we, oh, what was that, what was that, what was that? So we, we're playing the, um, I've forgotten the name of the, the song. The Sing Together song. Um, they dig a little deeper. Dig a little deeper, which literally exactly what is happening. Din is digging a little deeper. Did get the dragon. Oh, that's, oh, that's what huge. I wanted to see this turn. The dragon gets rid of the beast, but also leaves a very good character on the board. That is how I like getting rid of a beast. Yeah, that is absolutely huge. And showing the power of this Sing Together song, looking at the top seven cards of the deck, taking any two. I absolutely rate and ever since Din uh, used this to top a DLC, we've seen a couple of players start to pick up this card down because of the Madame Medusa. Oh, and, and that that's is it. it. What we saw there was Madame Medusa came down and took out the Jafar after the dragon came down and actually challenged into the Hidden Cove to take it out. And as soon as that was done, we saw a repeat of game one. Marco said, Din, I'm looking at your board, for, friend, and I cannot do anything about this. I was just about to say, Baker, <laughs> this is starting to feel a lot like how game one was finishing and yeah that is exactly Ooh. what happened two